it's 41. Probably it's time to start. Yes? Uh, okay, I'm Eugene. Uh, I'm from Altros, Minsk, and I'm working with Cloud Foundry there. My co-speaker, Arseni, is helping uh, our blockchain department with automating their stuff. Oops. Uh, unfortunately, he was not able to attend. He sends his story. He has some personal reasons. Uh, so, bl blockchain was quite a hot topic some time ago, and actually it's still hot. But still, some of my friends think that blockchain is equal to Bitcoin or Ethereum or something like. Definitely, they are not right. And technically, blockchain is nothing more than just a database or ledger. And it's a management system. Uh, and the data in this database organized in a special way. It's organized in transactions, and transactions are combined into blocks. Each block has a link to the previous one. So the name is from here. It's a chain of blocks. Uh, to obtain a blockchain node uh, and uh, to participate in the blockchain network, we need a special middleware, so-called blockchain client server. It's a special software. It's unique for every particular network. So, se several for blockchain, several for Ethereum. We are mostly working with Ethereum-like networks, so we selected Parity. Uh, it's quite a good client. It has a great community. It uh, has an official Docker image, and it's feature-rich. So it was good for us. As you already said, blockchain is a database. And to make it useful, we need to do something with this data. We need to receive this data, we need to upload this data, we need to analyze it somehow and do something useful. So we need an application. In blockchain, applications called DAPs, distributed applications. Actually, it's uh, the same applications as usual, uh, but uses blockchain methods under the hood and some blockchain logic. Also, it uh, relies on smart contracts. Smart contracts is a software that validates uh, some digital negotiations, negotiations sorry, uh, between network participants. Uh, was mentioning then in DAPs authorization working a bit uh, different than usual. Uh, DAP relies on a wallet. Wallet provides a key and the data, the transactions are encrypted uh, in DAPs and the client, Parity in our case, receives encrypted flow. Actually, it uh, helps to mitigate uh, main in the middle attack. In this case, it's not valid at all. Uh, DAP developers are often, in our case at least, are often guys who wrote uh, normal business applications. And uh, some of them are familiar with Cloud Foundry. So one day they came to us and asked us, hey guys, give us some automation, give us something like Cloud Foundry. We, we want to move fast, we want to uh, deliver feature fast. Uh, we decided to, get, to give them a node something like. We decided to give them exact Cloud Foundry. And actually, Cloud Foundry selection is not too technical here because we had a foundation where developers already worked, and other developers, not blockchain. Uh, and we had a platform team who can manage uh, Cloud Foundry. And uh, as you already said, we had a developer who can CF push and like CF push. So our first step here was to select the first citizen of application and uh, some kind of application and push it to Cloud Foundry. Uh, even with quite a large Cloud Foundry experience, we were surprised because we just have push and it almost worked. Then we make uh, parity, you know, NPM version consistent in our code and uh, Cloud Foundry not just built pack and it actually works. The solution is not great. You can ask, uh, you can probably ask about where Parity here. Parity was installed on separate VM, and we hard coded configuration of Parity in the, our application. Now it's 
not the best, I, d I understand, but it's working and we understand that we are doing things right, we on the right way. But again, it's not the best solution and we are upset like this Corgi. Uh, then we decided to do some improvements. We wanted something that helped us to have several parity nodes uh, at the same time because our developers needed it. We also wanted something which helps us to develop, destroy and deploy parity client. And also we wanted to live in containers to uh, reduce uh, virtual machine overheads. So, you know, the answer on any cloud-related, on even not cloud-related question today is Kubernetes. So we wanted to give it a try. It's, uh, we created a deployment, we created the services, and it started to work. Uh, we received uh, the flexibility for operation team. We reduced our cloud bill, but still, we had some difficulties. We still have manual management. Manu manual, I mean that developers still need to go to operation team and ask them to deal with Kubernetes. Uh, and flexibility is still low because uh, the service, the Kubernetes service is hard coded somewhere in application. Uh, somewhere here we realized that we are dealing with typical Cloud Foundry setup. We have uh, application stateless moving fast in terms of features, uh, Node.js based, and its developers love CF push. It's typical Node.js Cloud Foundry application, cloud native. And we have an external service, in our case living in Kubernetes. It's stateful, not so fast in terms of feature, in terms of feature. So probably we should do something with service broker. We should create a service broker to connect to our Kubernetes. It was our step two. What is service broker? Service broker, probably you know, a lot of been quite common concept in Cloud Foundry world. Service broker is a software which connects a service and a platform. Its main goal to answer the several important questions. Uh, is service here? How many resources I need and how many resources can service provide? Who configure the system which provides the service? And how to connect to the service from the application? Uh, we started to code even, and uh, it was somewhere in the autumn, and I saw on Spring One conference such a project like Kibosh. Kibosh is an on-demand service broker. It uh, deploys resources to Kubernetes. So it's what we were looking for. Our developers can use CFCLI to manage services, to create them on demand, to delete them when they are no longer necessary. And uh, the service connection stream can be get from, uh, from environment variables, which are set up in application container. So our step three is to use Kibosh. Kibosh relies on Helm uh, to deploy resources to Kubernetes. Uh, Helm is quite popular thing in Kubernetes world, probably the most popular way to deploy complicated software. So what we needed is to create a Helm chart. It's much simpler than deal with service broker, with Go coding or something like this. Uh, now I'll try to answer that service broker important questions to help you understand how all this stuff working. So is service here? Ye yes, says Kibosh. Kibosh is a typical service broker. It can be used with something like CF create service broker command. And uh, its offering appears in Cloud Foundry marketplace after this command. How many resources do I need and how many resources can our service provide? Uh, this question in typical service broker is answered by a concept of service plans. Here in our deployment, we should somehow set up service plans in our Helm chart. So Helm chart has a variables 
and we create some YAML notation, some plans to redefine these variables. So we have a several variables set, uh, variables set for several plans. Probably the easiest question, who configures the service source, so the system who provides the service? As we are on demand, we are using Helm, the answer is Helm here. Our Helm chart do the job. Uh, our Helm chart can be customized to correspond the reach parity functional, but nowadays it's quite simple. It uses only one default service plan, and uh, it, probably you know Helm can deal with dependencies on Kubernetes. Uh, parity is independent software. It's not. Uh, it have no dependencies on MySQL, Redis, anything like this. So no dependencies. And probably the most interesting question, how the developer and the application can access the server who service who live in Kubernetes. Kibosh is a software who can provide a description of Kubernetes service and Kubernetes secrets to the container with application. They appear in Wikup services environment variable, and the developer can do the job they can do and like do. They can parse variable and uh, create the connection string or the configuration file, how it's shown on our slide and in our case. It's a brief description of our solution. We are relies on the patterns which provided in Kibosh official repo. Uh, we deliver Kibosh as a Bosch release. Uh, our Bosch release includes Kibosh itself and our Helm chart. And also plans description, definitely. Uh, Kibosh is a great software which can be de shipped with a bazaar subsystem. Bazaar subsystem, it helps uh, to manage Helm charts with uh, uh, which used by Kibosh uh, with SLI, without redeploying Bosch release. Probably we should use it somehow, somewhere, but nowadays we are not using it. Uh, we rely on concourse, our, our CICD system uh, creates a Helm chart Bosch release on every single commit to GitHub uh, when we do something with Helm chart. In general, our CI/CD system, the, it's under construction now, to be honest, uh, but it has uh, three branches, I should say. Uh, we should do something with Bosch release. We should do something with Helm chart itself. And of course, we should do something with application. Then we should merge all these flows uh, and uh, see how all the things are working together. This is pretty all for now, but I'm show, going to show a video with a, which can demonstrate how it's working. Here we can see that we have Cloud Foundry. And we have already installed Bosch release with Kibosh. Now the operator is going to create a service offering in Cloud Foundry Marketplace. And of course, we need to enable service access to have the plans accepted by in in CF space. Now we can see that offering appears in CF marketplace. We have installed and configured Kubernetes. And here we can see that we have only default namespaces. Let's see what's going on with pods. Also, only the default stuff. It's 
It's our favorite magical command CF push. We are going to deploy Node.js application. It's much faster than usual because on video I make it six times faster. <laughs> Application is here and receive a road. Let's create now a service from the service offering. Service is here. And see what's going on in Kubernetes. Oops. We can see new namespaces created in Kubernetes for us by Kibosh. and see what pods exist there. Yes, it's pods from our Helm chat services as well. Let's bind service to our application. Definitely restage it. And now we can see in environment variables all the stuff, uh, all service description and secret description from Kubernetes deployments. Here's this big JSON. And finally, we can see that application is up and running. It's a voting application using in POA network to select validators. That's all from my side.